Welcome. Hey there, I'm Sue with Get to the Farm. In our ongoing exploration of the essential nutrients plants need to thrive, we're now turning our attention to phosphorus. This nutrient plays a vital role in plant growth and development, from supporting healthy root systems to aiding in the production of flowers and fruit. So let's dive into the world of phosphorus and learn how you can ensure your plants have all the phosphorus they need to flourish. Are your plants lacking vigor or not producing as much fruit as you hoped? The culprit may be a lack of phosphorus in your soil. Phosphorus is crucial nutrient that plants need to develop strong roots, produce flowers, and set fruit. In this video, we'll discuss how to determine if your soil needs phosphorus and go over various methods to supply it to your garden. By the end of this video, you'll have the knowledge and tools you need to boost the phosphorus available in your soil and take your gardening to the next level. Phosphorus is a nutrient that doesn't easily move through soil water, traveling about only an inch per year. This means that any phosphorus fertilizer should be applied well before planting and mixed into the root zone. The pH level of soil should also be adjusted before adding organic or synthetic phosphorus as slightly acidic soil prevents phosphorus from being locked up. Cold temperatures suppress the activity of soil organisms that could make phosphorus available to plants, resulting in temporary deficiencies for young plants in cold soils, even though soil tests show adequate phosphorus. If spring temperatures remain cold for a long time, early annual crops may need a short-term boost of bone meal composted poultry manure, fish emulsion, or foliar sprays of liquid seaweed. To adjust the application rates for vegetable gardens, use the rate we suggest here for flowers, shrubs, and trees in average soil, but only apply half as much if the soil is already fertile, unless of course your plants are heavy feeders. Using rock phosphate is the easiest way to maintain phosphorus levels over a long time, and this slow-release form should be spread in the fall to make it available to the following growing season. It will continue to release phosphorus for at least another three years, so only one application every four years or so is necessary. When reading labels on fertilizer bags, the labeling laws require the available amount of phosphate in the first year be listed for inorganic fertilizers. Therefore, the percentage given in the NPK listing is much lower than the total phosphorus present. For example, bags of rock phosphate may list only 3 to 4 percent available phosphate when the total phosphorus is actually about 30 percent. Triple superphosphate has a much higher analysis with a 0 0.460 0 listing because all of its phosphate is released in the first growing season. It's great for bringing up levels quickly, but not as good a buy for long-term maintenance of fertile soils because it contains only 20% total phosphorus. Always protect your lungs and respiratory passages by wearing a dust mask or respirator when handling fine powders, such as colloidal rock phosphate, Natural and organic sources of phosphorus include steamed bone meal, raw bone meal, hard rock phosphate, colloidal rock phosphate, and lignosulfate rock phosphate. Synthetic and inorganic sources of phosphorus include superphosphate, TSP or triple superphosphate, and ammonium phosphate. The various sources differ in terms of cost, duration in the soil, rate of application, and other factors, so you need to choose the one that best suits your needs. There are various natural and organic sources of phosphorus available for gardeners. One source is steamed bone meal, which contains 24% calcium, 20% phosphorus, and can range from 1110 to 330 in NPK analysis. 
fast-acting steamed bone meal is particularly suitable for alkaline soils. It lasts about 12 months in the soil. The recommended application rate for average soils is 1 to 2 pounds, and for phosphorus deficiency, 2 to 3 pounds. It can be relatively expensive to apply to large areas, though. Hard rock phosphate with 0.30 to 0.40 NPK analysis with 30% phosphorus and 48% calcium is a slow-acting source of phosphorus that lasts about five years in the soil. It is rich in micronutrients, but the high levels of calcium make it less than ideal for most alkaline soils. The recommended application rate for average soils is 2.5 pounds, for phosphorus deficiency, 5 pounds. Colloidal rock phosphate is a faster acting byproduct of mining hard rock phosphate with a 0.20 NPK analysis, 18% phosphorus, 19% calcium. It supplies the same nutrients as hard rock phosphate, but lasts about 3 to 5 years in the soil. The recommended application rate is the same as for hard rock phosphate. Lignosulfate rock phosphate is a newer product with 0.30 NPK analysis and 27% phosphorus, 29% calcium, and only 1% sulfur. It does not require acidic soil to dissolve well, supplies organic matter and micronutrients, and lasts about 3 to 5 years in the soil. The recommended application rate is 2.5 pounds for average soil and 5 pounds for soil deficient in phosphorus. Inorganic sources of phosphorus include superphosphate and triple superphosphate. Superphosphate has a 0, 20, 0 NPK and triple superphosphate has a 0, 45, 0 NPK analysis. Superphosphate is treated with sulfuric acid to make it fast-acting and supplies sulfur and calcium. It lasts about one season in the soil. The recommended application rate is 1 to 2 pounds for average soil and 2 to 3 pounds for soil deficient in phosphorus. Triple superphosphate is a concentrated form of superphosphate that increases soil acidity and supplies almost no sulfur. It lasts one season on average in the soil and the recommended application rate is a half pound per 100 square feet or one pound for 100 square feet for soil deficient in phosphorus. Ammonium phosphate is an inorganic source of phosphorus with an 11.480 to 18.460 NPK analysis. It also supplies nitrogen but increases soil acidity and can easily burn plants. It lasts about one season in the soil the recommended application rate is 1 pound per 100 square feet for average soil and 2 pounds for soils deficient in phosphorus. Whether you choose to amend your soil with organic sources of phosphorus or use synthetic fertilizers, it's important to make sure that your plants are getting the phosphorus they need to grow strong and healthy. Remember to follow the instructions on any fertilizers you use. Test your soil regularly to ensure your plants have the optimal nutrients they need. With a little bit of knowledge and effort, you can help your garden reach its full potential. Thanks for watching. Happy gardening. Hit that subscribe button for us. We'll see you next time. And I feel like New York City. Get me to the farm.